Hey everybody, it's Chad, and I'm here with Dan Klingensmith Jr., and we're gonna get an update on volume 13 of Creating G.I. Joe. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing a Night Force shirt, that's gonna come into play toward the end of the video, so stick around. Dan, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing just fine. So uh, how's everything going with volume 13 so far? Going pretty good. Kickstarter, or the the 13th I started, so last Wednesday, so it's almost been about a week. I think it's sitting around 14,000 right now. So uh, another four grand, you know, to get to the goal, and then uh, some stretch goals, you know, that I made an announcement on one of them. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we can get to that, and then another stretch goal even after that. And there's potentially a third uh, stretch goal, but that I need to work out some logistics because it would require uh a different type of shipping as far as the item so it wouldn't be um mm. in the box itself which we can talk about a little bit but uh i don't have it's not a for sure thing i need to price out some stuff with that so very interesting well that's um that's good to hear so hopefully we hit all those stretch goals and we can uh just see how that plays out in the future okay. <laughs> uh glad to see that the volume's doing really well so far what are some of the things as i hold up my what's on joe mind pen actually actually what are some of the things that you were really excited about to cover in volume 13 without getting into our our big talking point at the end of the video yeah um you know to me this is a good this is gonna be a strong you know volume as far as this is the wrap-up of all the production so you know there's certain things i've held on to of course you know, for the end, Snake Eyes 85, yep. um, the Defiant. I mean, honestly, the Defiant was intimidating to me because I knew so many people were involved. So I want to say this past winter, I in ended up interviewing probably about five or six people. So we had some of the designers, marketing, the, uh, the gentleman who did the tooling. So I had all kinds of, you know, people on here just to talk about the Defiant itself. Uh, there's some cool vehicles like the devil fish the water moccasin yeah um some later figures like the cobra commander from 91. um so there's two different colors of him i'll show out uh, which some people may or may not have seen um the unreleased stuff like i mentioned it's pretty much the only unreleased thing because of the because of it being the last volume for production it will be a little bit bigger than normal um so I'm trying to figure, or remember the total count. I think normally pages or the books are about 80 pages. This right. might creep up to 90 pages. So I think I have 80 pages of artwork and stuff alone. And then with the beginning and the written part, I think it's about 10 pages, if I recall. So, uh, and that's that's very interesting too. The written part this time around, I talk about the sales process. And so that was, you know, I never really met. I've met one gentleman who was the... Um, National brand manager, I believe, is the title. It's either regional or national for Toys R Us. I think national. And then I ended up uh, talking to uh, same thing. I think national um, manager for Target as well. One of the gentlemen, you know, the Toys R Us account. You know, he technically is Claymore. So you know, originally the sculpt was going to be based on him. Uh, and then the gentleman from Target is actually, uh, ironically enough, it's uh, Don Levine, Don Levine's son. So, really? mm -hmm. so there's a lot of history there with him Wow! and uh, it's been a joy listening and talking to him, not only about the sales, but um, you know, some stories about his dad and stuff like that. So that's been a, you know, a great time in, in learning that. John Levine's son, huh? Small world. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So I've been, uh, I've been burning through volume 12 just over and over and over. And I got to say, um, you know, being fans of GI Joe and, so you have the Havoc right here yeah. in Volume 12, yeah. and it shows what the original design of the Havoc was, kind of like you did with the Rolling Thunder and how mm -hmm. they wanted to call it the Rhino, right? But then we got mm -hmm. the Rhino later anyway. <laughs> and all, all that stuff's pretty interesting. So when you were going over the, the pages for the Defiant, if you've already laid mm -hmm. out the book, how many pages does the, does the Defiant take up? Uh, well, six pages total. Um the first two pages i show a lot of the artwork and then the next two pages 
Uh, I also show some blueprints as well uh, on that first cool. page, I believe. And then, um, then I show like the final product and there's a lot of written part on that one. So the written part kind of ventures into three pages at least, but then the, there's a two page spread that I'm doing. That is the, um, I guess you would call it one of the, one of the final presentation pieces for the defiant. And I chose to do a full two page spread because it's such an awesome looking rendering. And, um, when I was showing all the guys on the call, some of them had never even seen it. So they were really? like, Oh wait. Yeah. They're like, I need that. I need that. You know, they, they didn't even, or they just didn't remember it. And, uh, so it's such a cool rendering. So I just felt like it deserved a two page spread. I mean, I know it's maybe a little bit, you know, when you're looking at the, when you're thinking about the book and laying it out and trying to, you know, it's hard because this is the last production book. So it's a little bit more of a challenge than normal. Right. Sometimes I'll just like, well, it is what it is. I'll just roll something into the next book. That was a bit of a challenge this time, just because I knew this is it. And so, um, you know, but I, I thought it deserved a two page spread. And I think everybody will agree to that when I see yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, um, it's the defiant. So exactly. Yeah. The exactly. flag gets a lot of love. The defiant should get a lot of love. I think it's fair. I'll exactly. be, uh, I'll be really interested uh, to see that when it comes out. Another really cool, iconic vehicle from the enemy mm -hmm. team that uh, you're putting in volume 13 is mm -hmm. the Cobra Rattler. Yes, the Rattler. So, so originally they wanted to call it the Cobra Z07 Tank Smasher, right? Yep, yep. What do you What do you got on this thing that you can share? Uh, just, you know, from what I recall, I'll just put my head. You know, A10, of course, you know, yep. kind of inspired by that. Um, you know, it was a funny blurb I write about, you know, one of the gentlemen getting stopped at the airport, you know, regarding some parts of the of the Rattler itself, you know. So just uh, some basic history on the, you know, where it came from and then a little bit of that story. Um, and then as far as like, I remember, you know, if you look at it, it looks kind of high off the ground. Yeah. And so from what I uh, remember, Wayne had talked about, you know, creating that effect, you know, being off the off the ground a little bit more, just kind of made it look bigger, I guess, yeah. and in one way, because it's off the ground a little bit. So and then the awesome explosion, you know, back or explosion view of it as well. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah. The exploded view is fantastic. Yeah. And Greg Bernstein did the model for it. So he shared some, you know, a little bit about that as well. So. It's but, interesting when you when you look at the the design and the lower left portion of the screen here it's got two engines on each wing mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there was a gi joe retaliation vehicle that came out that almost has that exact wing design two engines on each wing so that's that's really cool to look at but yeah i mean yes yeah, it's, it's you know it's, i love wayne's style i think you know i mean if you look at the has labs so far they've been his vehicles so who knows, hint, hint, maybe this will be one down the road. Um, maybe. We'll, we'll see, I guess. But all the little notes that he added to it as well, you know, I always find interesting and just, you know, love to see all the details that he had put in a lot of this, a lot of those vehicles. So, um, but definitely, uh, you know, I kind of right here, just the fact that it was, it was originally designed for GI Joe. It was originally a Joe vehicle. Yes. Right. And so, and then he changed it to Cobra. So I think at that time he mentioned, you know, they had only had the glider and the fang. So he felt like we need something stronger to fight GI Joe. So they right. kind of Because the Joes definitely had an iconic vehicle with the Sky Striker. So the yeah. Rattler definitely makes sense. And then we wouldn't have gotten to that awesome issue with the comics with Ace versus Wild Weasel and the salute at the end. So exactly. it worked out. And I mean, and, and we did get our green version later on, you know. Yes. That's uh, true. Toys R Us. So. Which I wish I would have bought more of those, but hey, eh, oh, you know, yeah. live and learn. Speaking so, of which, you got this guy right here. Oh yeah, wow, weasel. So again, tank, ma tank smasher pilot. You know, I right. love the the working names, of course. But a lot of round rudette renderings. Um, you know, color. I only had one color study, and then there's a note regarding you know the sculptor that was sent from Roger Avery. You know that they needed a figure one one um figure made for a commercial shoot so 
um, something that, you know, wasn't common seeing that Joe's were sculpted two to one. Right. So, yeah, the two of them. <clears throat> yeah. The so paint masters and whatnot were created. So, you know, I'm assuming my assumption is they had to, you know, get this one to one ready very quickly. I'm trying to remember, read the note here. It's kind of hard for me to read on my, uh, my sample just because it's smaller than the regular page, but um, I'll have to see later what it says, but there's a mention of the two to one. So I don't know if they even had time to do that or what. I think it's really cool on here on this, this design where you don't see the ascot and you actually see the skin tone neck. I really appreciate the fact that they went with the ascot on wild weasel versus just yeah. the regular flesh neck. I think it helps them stand out more. For sure. For sure. I mean, he's such a, you know, he's a cool character. I'm not a main, main character, but I mean, he definitely has one of the coolest vehicles. So, uh, yeah. And as far as Cobra pilots go, you know, you have your, your strata vipers who are just kind of your vipers of the air and wild weasel. He's like way up there among the ranks. He's like the mm -hmm. ace of their aces. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's a definite um, counterpart, a good counterpart to ace himself. Yes. You yeah. know, when it comes to the, the battles. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. So what are some of the other characters that we're going to be looking at for volume 13, Dan? So, I mean, like the ones I mentioned, the ones you just showed. I mean, like Crankcase, AWE, Devilfish, Sergeant Slaughter, Triple T, Special Ooh. Mission Brazil, uh, Law and Order. Again, you know, one I kind of waited, you know, tribute to Kirk, uh, Kirk Razigian. Right. Um, Steel Brigade, uh, the Crossfire. You got hardtop payload, the action packs, like the motorized action packs, which there's some cool stuff these, in there. These guys. Motorized action packs? Yep, 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 yep. So some cool mock-ups and stuff that I had, so I figured feature those. Uh, the Cobra Sea Ray, the Cobra Imp, which has a really cool history to it. Um, yes it does and you know when i was younger i didn't really like the imp and then as i became an adult collector it really started speaking to me more so i got a couple of them yeah and then and there's some really neat features that, that i was going to have as well which i'll let you guys read about but yeah um wild card mean dog which was going to be a different deco which was really cool so you kind of get a sneak peek of that warthog night force hurricane cobra rage ice saber Sonic Fighters, Battle Wagon, Cobra Commander, Toxo Zombie, Septic Tank, Ninja Force Dice, Jabang, uh, Duke, Destro, Patriot, Mega Marines, Mirage, Battle Corps, Kill Hall, Bazooka, Long Arm, Iceberg, Star Brigade Payload, Star Brigade FX, and Battle Corps, uh, Shipwreck and Flint. And then last but not least, unreleased Night Force characters. <laughs> unreleased night force characters well what do you know so before i actually pull up the image mm -hmm. the kickstarter hit the stretch goal and so you showed the tease of what the first one would be and you kind of set social media on fire with this image uh i did pull this right off your facebook you said i could and <laughs> let's talk about what would have been two of the first released Toys R Us exclusive Night Force figures for 1988. Mm -hmm. And that would have been low light and a repaint of Battle Force 2000 Blaster from 1987. And yes. people went nuts when they saw this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it I got a lot of uh, buzz yesterday, which is really fun. And so, uh, or the, got a lot of buzz the other day. You know, yeah. um, just, you know, and I knew it would. I mean, it's such a cool concept. And the fact that it's Night Force, which is such a popular subgroup. And that's the thing, you know, I wanted to kind of get that teaser out. So I was hoping to hit that 12K just to kind of, you know, create that buzz and, and get things going. And then, you know, the goal is to get the 16K. And then I'll share, you know, maybe something else on the next one of the next uh, two characters. And who knows, like I said, on the third thing uh, regarding, and, and again, that's another thing for Night Force too, the third thing. So uh, it'll be all Night Force related. But um, yeah, this is a lot of fun. I mean, I, I uh, teamed up with Adam Riches. I thought about this for a while, to be honest with you. This has been planned for a minute. 
and uh you know went to hasbro talked to them about you know are they okay with doing something like this which you know they did and they're good with it and they knew adam's work and they trusted him and to do a good job which he's already done you know with just this one and this one is more um i had some proofs that i sent him from the original low light and blaster so i clean you know clean them up to make them look what they're what they should have looked like you know right. in their uh in their night force deco per se um <laughs> excuse me and then the other two characters which i'm really hoping we get to because those he's painting traditionally so he's painting them in a style as, as though hector would and um you know he's doing an awesome job i've seen one of the two so far and um it's magnificent so uh really talented really excited to have him on board uh he's excited just as a joe fan to be involved in it and yeah. be able to do something like this i mean he did the night force ripcord he did you know for uh for the uh has lab so you know i thought he'd be perfect for this project seeing that he's you know he has that um that night force character already under his belt so now he has a couple more you know a lot and a lot of people had some questions yesterday you know, because initially I didn't, you know, I just shared an update on Kickstarter, but I wanted to get it on social as well. But I wanted to give it a, give it a day for those who backed it, right? Kind of see it and and see the update. But um, yeah, definitely a, a lot of buzz for Mister Blaster. Uh, some people loved it, some people did not like that as me Blaster. But I will tell you and show you why I think Blaster is awesome. Why don't you go ahead and show us? Should I? Should I? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. There we go. So again, this is a um, based on the original PMS colors, which I have all the details on. I was able to hire a former uh, model shop worker to go ahead and paint up. Uh, just like I did for Desert Force for a previous volume. Um, I had them also paint up the four Night Force characters. And there's also another four characters that I'll feature in volume 14 that were never produced as well that I had customized to match what they would have looked like. Very happy with, with the end result. So. That blaster looks fantastic. 3djoes.com. If we go back and we look at 1987's Battle Force 2000 blaster, right? So uh, on the card art, he's got full sleeves, but the actual figure himself has short sleeves and long gloves. Whereas your Night Force version, it's more in line with the original card art. Mm -hmm. And we have what blaster looked like initially in Battle Force 2000, which the sculpt is great. Like I always liked blaster. I, I think that his green isn't too... You know, it's not too egregious or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But this guy, compared to what you have in your hand, is just, it's just night and day. Literally, and I, I think literally Blaster night. Is, <laughs> I get it. I think Blaster as Night Force is fantastic. When I first saw that, I I was blown away. And that's one of the things that I love about this uh, creating G.I. Joe series that you've been doing, you know, working on the 13th volume already is that no matter what you know about gi joe or you think you know about gi joe you don't there's always something you don't know and it, these volumes are just so fantastic and another thing that you were talking about where you're going to make those card backs uh like the zartan one and this yeah. is the zartan card back for anybody who doesn't know zartan was never released carded in the united states he was released carded with like Takara and, and other companies, but not in the U.S. because he came with the Swamp Skier. And this was the card that you guys designed for Zartan. And then there was also the Battle Corps Ranger stuff that we never got. There's that. Yeah. So I'll have some of that in the next book. I'll have some. Of the, um, I've shown a lot of them animals. You know, right. as, as you know, you know, throughout the book, every book covers different uh, years um production mainly you know throughout the book but at the very end i like to sprinkle some unreleased concepts and uh, just to kind of you know spruce, spruce it up a little bit i just received the text a week ago of two vehicles i've never even seen in my life artwork on so um 
And I'm still adding, honestly, even tonight, this is what I'm doing tonight after this. Someone found some additional um, images or sketches, pencils for vehicles that I'm featuring in this volume. So I'm, I'm already going to add some stuff to the current volume that's already live. One thing yeah. I, I will say that I like about volume 13 is you've got, um, I don't want to say you've got lofty, but you, you've got a little more adventurous with the, the stretch goals and the, the night four stuff. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing all of that come together. If, depending on uh, what's available, maybe I'll choose something out of volume 14 to maybe make a, you know another card, card back of, you know, of an unreleased character. Yeah. Um, that he can, you know, maybe he and I can team up again and work on, uh, as well as maybe put it out there to the fans. Like, hey, from what's been featured from volume one through 12, because I mean, 13 is the night for so you're already getting those. So right. volume one through 12 of somebody or some, you know, some character that was unreleased. All right. So this is uh, the Creating G.I. Joe, a Real American Hero website. And again, uh, for everyone who's watching this video, by all means, please look at all the links in the description. So I'm going to link everything that Dan and I have been talking about today. So um, this is the site where you can find all of the volumes. Dan, what else uh, can they find that's cool in here? Uh, some sample pages are in there. Um probably can update some new ones but um content so you can kind of see what's in each volume right as, as well um oh there's also, the man there he is there he is um hascon which i which i was part of back in 2017 and then this is one of the unproduced vehicles that you yep. can always find unproduced figures and vehicles in the back of the volumes which I think is another fantastic testament to how you laid these books out because not only do you cover all the years in each volume, so it's not mm -hmm. just volume one is 1982, but every volume I know when I'm getting to the back, you know, that I'm going to find really cool custom vehicle ideas like this Cobra Maniac. Yeah, yeah. So, just so that, that kind of stuff I think is a wealth of information for people and it it definitely gets me excited about about the next volume every time that I I see one coming out. And yeah, the Nomad. Number, yeah, the Nomad. Mm -hmm. So again, for number fourteen, it's going to be all unproduced. So now, granted, there's maybe some exam or some prototypes and samples and, and stuff up there, like the Ninja Commandos, and, but as far as other stuff. There'll be never before seen artwork potentially, you know. Again, somebody saw it at some point, so it's not never before seen. Sure. Um, but you know, from a collector's standpoint, majority, if not all, should be uh not all, but a majority of it is stuff that probably nobody's ever seen. Um and like I said, there's stuff that I, I'm gonna put another feeler out probably very soon. Um I did already today and somebody sent me two designs you know two new unproduced concepts today so i'm gonna put it out there to everybody like hey do you have anything that maybe just never shared you know because it really didn't come up because it wasn't produced so it didn't really matter to them right and that's so. that's why i have to say that these these volumes are a wealth of information for uh any level of fan you know, there's always something new that you're going to find no matter who you are or how long you've uh, been into G.I. Joe. So I, I really appreciate the work that you do. There's so much in there. And then also just the interviews from all the former Hasbro individuals who worked on mm -hmm. the brand and the insight and different memos. So it's a good series. I'm proud of it. Kind of my little mark on the brand that I love. And, and um, you know, it's my way of saying thanks to all the men and women who worked on the brand and that's really what it's about, you know, in, in the sense of the collection of art um, when it comes to that. And, you know, it's where the inspiration came from originally with, you know, Ron Rudette's interview that I read was, yeah. you know, talking about the team. And so that's what I try to feature. So That's very cool. Well, again, Dan, uh, I want to thank you for your time. And um, I look forward to volume 13 when that comes out pretty soon. Awesome. It'll be out. All it right. makes it very soon. Awesome. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Cool. Well, there you have it. An awesome interview with Dan Klingen Smith Jr. about creating G.I. Joe Volume 13. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I want to thank everyone for your enthusiasm. 
truly from the bottom of my heart i want to thank everybody for all your interactions not just the subs but the comments the people that i talk to everybody in the community it's just truly awesome thanks for sticking around to the end have an awesome day <laughs> don't be nervous it's your show no i just like bloopers <laughs> oh i'm not nervous what's up man you nervous in the service or what mm. no no never and then we wouldn't have gotten that awesome episode or issue blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> was that that was my daughter <laughs> um you gave leatherneck four panels was that for ron yeah yeah yep. <laughs> same thing same thing in law and order yeah